So right now I'm in that space where my building is pregnant with possibility. I'm trying to think of what to do next and um, I thought I'd just do a brief video on my plan for the next build. I think it's going to be quite an interesting one. Um, I had actually half built something else, I'll show you briefly here. This was a Pico and an SI5351 and it was going to be one of Farhan's two meter designs and it may well still end up being that I need to build a, a super head at some point um, and that might be the radio that I use uh, to build that. But I got more interested in another idea um, and I just wanted to illustrate my point. This is an amazing radio, uh, QRP Labs. <laughs> should have stuck these on better um but qrp labs is um makes amazing kit and this is a beautiful radio i mean it's tiny uh the reception is amazing it covers so many bands it fits in your pocket you can take it out um yeah so to prefix my criticism by saying you should get one of these i mean they're, they're so inexpensive as well um especially if you build it yourself although from my previous video you'll see that that is quite a challenging prospect um there's a little bit of a waiting list if you want to buy a new one but anyway, what, what's kind of been on my mind is what's wrong with this form factor? Same with the true SDX, right? Um, part of it is that this is a really bad display, right? It's two lines of display. I mean, you know, compared to what else they could have put in, it's probably the best job. But this dot matrix, two column, two row display is, uh, is nothing really um, compared to some of the displays you see on modern radios. Um, and the, the control surfaces are, are there too, and I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, it takes an RF, a power, um, uh, phones, audio, everything that you would need to plug into it. Um, and the other thing that interests me about this is that the CPU, while a reasonably good one for a portable device, is nothing compared to a phone, an iPad, uh, a PC. So what I've been wondering is, why shouldn't this just be a black box? Why not take off the controls, take away the display, maybe have a little light to say that it's on, uh, have a connector, um, and do everything else in the phone that you've got in your pocket anyway. I keep thinking, you know, if I'm if I'm hiking up a, a hill and I, I reach the summit and I want to do uh, a porter activation, um, how would I do that? Um, well, with this, it's great. I, I've got everything I need, but I'm already carrying my phone. You would hope I wouldn't get it out too much on a <laughs> on a day out in nature. But when I stop to do that activation, the phone in my pocket or the iPad, if I was carrying one, um, or even the PC, if I'm at home, has a much more powerful processor than the one that's in here. Uh, the, I, the Apple M1 chips, M2, M3s are, are amazing pieces of silicon, far outstripping the, the power that's in this thing. Um, and also... The display, right? This is a 4K or whatever it is on the iPad, a, a beautiful display. And right here, you know, we've got this cheap and simple one. I could have um, a frequency meter, waterfall display, all the control surfaces I want, all touchable by my finger, uh, controllable. And uh, yeah, so obviously SDR is probably familiar to everyone watching this video. But what I'm thinking about is a porter device about this size, maybe a bit bigger because it doesn't really need to be this small. Uh, and if I'm making it myself, it will end up being a little bit larger. But a portable device without any of the controls. Uh, there's, there's potential also for the Mosque to be on the headphones, but I think probably on the on the phone, sorry, but on the, um, I think it probably lives best here because it can transmit quickly. Um, power, uh, aerial, and I thought uh, as a minimalist um, look, I'll have an LED that might even be different colours and just uh, changes colour or flashes depending on what's currently happening within the box. As I said, the USB or Wi-Fi connected to uh, the phone, which has all the nice controls, and of course, the audio amplifier and the headphones. There's no need for this to do any audio amplification because it'll all be here. I can use my AirPods, um, right? So no need to, um, to do that, um, which would be really nice. Uh, yeah, that's the plan. Uh, let me uh, switch back to the diagram here. Whoop. I'm kind of looking through my camera at it, but uh, let's have a look. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, so my iPad, this is a bit of a, a nicer diagram. You can see we've got the antenna coming in. Uh, the green blocks are the, are the hardware. So I'm going to have the usual bandpass filter, a mixer, 
which is going to mix down with a 12 kilohertz offset into the diplexer. Um, the uh, diplexer is going to get rid of that RF and just present the 12 kilohertz to an amplifier. I'm not really sure what the gain on this needs to be. Uh, it's probably going to be a 5532 dual or triple op amp um, with some kind of AGC, I think. I think that's going to be necessary, uh, but we can do that later. Into a low pass filter uh, and then out to an analog to digital converter. Now at the moment, I'm planning on using an 1802. Uh, I got some modules off eBay. They don't look very well made, <laughs> uh, but we'll see. That This one actually looks like quite a challenge to program because there isn't much documentation out there for programming it from a Pi. So I may well start by using the ADC inside the Pi Pico, uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, so yes, the low pass filter into the ADC, digitized 12 kilohertz audio, into some kind of local microprocessor, which doesn't have to be super speedy, right? It's, its only job is to trans, is to shuffle data and, and manage the radio. Um, so I'm gonna use a Pi Pico, which I've got over here. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, yeah, so the, the MPU controls the AGC. It'll get commands to, to set the gain control. Uh, it reads in the digitized audio and outputs it as an audio device to whatever is on the other side of this wireless or USB connection. Um, it also commands a SI5351, which you can see here, which will generate uh, the necessary frequency for the mixer. Uh, and then later when I get everything working, I'll add some kind of transmitter. Um, I haven't decided on this yet, but it'll be the usual power amp and uh, low pass filter. Uh, yeah, so the fine details. Um, I intend for the device you're carrying or your PC over the network or whatever to control this device using MIDI. Uh, the advantage of that is that this device won't uh, then need any special drivers. It can just, it'll, this, uh, the black box will present itself as a MIDI controller, uh, which will allow the other side to communicate with it without adding any drivers. That's my plan anyway. We'll see how that goes. Um, and we're going to use, um, an audio uh, signal, as I said, from the MPU straight back over the network, and that's gonna transmit audio. And it can be that this device looks like uh, some kind of audio source to the phone. So again, no drivers required. The phone is gonna think that it's plugged into something that accepts MIDI and returns audio. And then all the work is on here, right? If it's CW, I imagine the decoding is gonna be, but if I get to that point where I'm receiving this audio here, it's gonna be pretty quick that I managed to decode CW. The, the communication protocol, I think, is one of the hard points here. So is the um, the ADC control and setup. And I've missed the details, right? Um, I think I actually wrote that here, but um, I'm not showing transmit switch, receive switching. I'm not showing padding or uh, any filters or anything else I need in this chain. This is just a, a rough overview. So I'm starting with the blue components here, the MPU, the Pi Pico, the SI5351 and the ADC. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the SI5351 either into the ADC or into the MPU, it's gonna feed a 12 kilohertz audio signal so that I can get all of the transmission, the, the communication stuff working before I uh, worry about the rest of the hardware. So I did quickly um, hook up a little test rig here so this is a Pi Pico 2W. I put the latest one on because I thought, well, you know, I might get to the point where I'll try the Wi-Fi connection, but it'll be, this is the USB connection that will go to eventually to the phone, although I'll develop it on a PC first. Um, this is the SI5351, which has the three clock outputs. I'll probably only use one, maybe two of those. Um, one for transmit and receive, maybe. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure out the details of that later. Uh, and this is one of these boards. I've put it in a socket and I've put it at a bit of an angle just so it was a bit more solid. Um, but yes, this is um, this is the unknown. I need to read the data sheet, figure out uh, how to program this. Obviously, the power is obvious, um, uh, but then what all these signals mean and how they're clocked is the interesting part. It takes uh, the audio in here. Um, and the reason I'm using an ADC separate to the one in the Pico is because the one in the Pico has generally a reputation of being pretty crap. Um, but that's still an option for me to get going, right? If I can get CW uh, playing on my phone or my PC um, before I even worry about this thing, then that will be a great win and it'll give me a lot of confidence. Um,
but yes, the end result is to use the end idea is to use this cheap module. These are very cheap, they're three or four pounds on eBay. Even though the ones that arrive don't look very well made, I'm sure I can find one that is that works. Um, now, eventually, maybe I would end up making a PCB for some of this, uh, right, and putting putting a little PCB so that I could build something this small. Uh, but for now, it's going to be a prototype, and this is the digital end, if you like, the um, the end that communicates with the PC. The other thing I didn't mention is uh, you really need this if you're um, writing software for a Pi. You need a debug probe. Um, this allows you to plug in a second USB to your PC and step through the code. I'm actually a professional developer and when I run code, when I've developed code, the first thing I do is hit F5 and launch the debugger. I very rarely run my code outside of the debugger, to be fair, uh, and I always step through what I've written to check that it's doing what I expect it's doing. So when I first started working with a the Pi, um, I had all that thing of making lights flash and sounds appear and all sorts of other things to try and get some control over uh, what was going on, but it's tedious and wastes hours. So this time around I've figured out, I've got three fairly precarious connections here to the debug port, uh, and then I've got three connections here to the UART. God knows why they're all separate like this and you have to figure all this out. It would be nice if the debug probe just plugged in somewhere on a standard connection on all Pi Picos. I think they should do that, but I guess so few people worry about um, debugging and they're quite content to just keep firing and firing until something works. Um, but oh, trust me, this is the business. And I'm going to show the software running so you can see it, um, see it, how it all works as well. At the end of this video, I'll switch to the PC. So yeah, that was a bit of a ramble, um, but that's the plan. Um, a pocket, a uh, sorter, radio, uh, that uses the power of the phone for the control and the demodulation. Uh, starting with CW, you know, if I get to the point where I'm uh, receiving CW on the 7 megahertz band and I can filter it and listen to it, that will be amazing. Um, that will be a great first step. But then, of course, I can add tailor detection uh, to, you know, detect the phase changes. I can add uh, SSB, maybe FM, all that sort of stuff uh, after I've got the basic radio up and running. So yeah, quite an exciting project. I don't know how long it's going to take me. This is just the first intro video. Uh, I'm sure like the last project, there'll be 25 videos and you can follow along uh, with me as we go. Um, Christmas is coming, so perhaps over Christmas I'll get a little bit more time to, to play in the lab. But yeah, uh, as I say, quite excited. Um, I'm going to switch to the PC now just so you can see this module running and see what I've wired up so far. So as I mentioned, here's the um, board plugged in. I've got it plugged into the USB of my PC and the debug probe's on, you can see the light there. Uh, and actually it's running the current version of the code and I've hooked up the SI5351 to my tiny SA analyzer and you can see that I'm getting a seven megahertz uh, strong signal there. A little bit of a harmonic there as well, actually. Um, but yeah, there it is. Um, so that's what it does. I'm gonna switch to the uh, recording on the PC and show you uh, the software so far. It's very simple. Okay, here's a quick look at the uh, code. It's very simple. It's broken out into separate modules, so uh, the main routine is very easy to understand. It's an entry point. It initializes the I2C bus. I'm using I2C1 because they're the pins that I've connected on the Pico. Then it initializes the oscillator and sets its frequency. And then I blink the LED. And then nothing else happens really, it just sits in a um, backed off loop doing nothing because I haven't written any more of the code yet. Um, so the LED is a simple uh, piece of code that blinks the light. Uh, annoyingly it's different depending on the Pico you're using, so I wrap it in a routine. Um, this is the oscillator code. Uh, simply sets up the 5351. Note that there's a calibration factor I have to set up here which I will do later. Um, and then turns everything off and then there's an API here which lets you set the frequency and enable clocks one, two or three. Uh, there's also a little bit of initialization for the I2C port, uh, just the standard stuff. I'm not actually sure how much of this I need but I've had this for so long that um, I just leave it in anyway. Um, yeah, and that's it. So it's, it's quite a simple bit of code so far. All it does is set up the frequency on the uh, 5351. 
Um, but as I mentioned earlier, because I've got a debug probe, I can actually uh, debug it now. So let's try that. If I hit uh, F5, oh, that's compile. That's uh, I'm not usually uh, I'm not usually sat inside VS Code, so it takes me a little while to <laughs> remember where everything is. But if we hit debug here, um, where and we're straight in. Uh, there we go, and I can step through, right? I can hit F10, um, do the I2C in it. There's a pause while it goes away and runs that code in the debugger. Um, takes quite a while actually uh, when you're inside debug, but as you can see, I can uh, see variables, I can step through the code, and I can see uh, entirely what's going on. So yeah, um, I think development should be rapid once I uh, figure out the ins and outs of the uh, analog to digital conversion. Uh, and that's enough for today, I think.